This is Aiko. She comes from an idyllic village on the Japanese Shikoku Island. And I will tell you about her and her work in a moment, but let's back up for a sec. Automation is what some of us do for a living. Automation is what I talk about here in this realm. Although I very often give some examples of concrete problems or make courses where I teach you how to automate or to program stuff yourself, I've kind of assumed we're on the same page, page when we talk about automation in the construction industry. But now I don't want to take that for granted and I want to make sure we understand each other. What can we actually automate? What work are we doing manually that can be done by an algorithm and eventually by a robot? For some of you, this story might be the obvious common sense. One of those, everybody knows that, right? But hey, the best books are the ones that tell you what you already know. And this story might just do that. So let's do it like this. Let me introduce you to a couple of people first. This is Rick. He's a city planner from Singapore and he often helps big developers and real estate companies design entire city blocks. Shape and form in architecture have different scales and city planning is one of the largest ones. Rick likes to wake up early, have his coffee black so he can concentrate on algorithms that can take contours of city blocks, position of streets, maybe some rules that his colleagues at the government require and then spit out a lot of different possible solutions. So he uses different optimization techniques and modern machine learning methods in order to play the role of an AI advisor to whomever wants to generate optimal and efficient solution for their development. Now, you have seen this a lot in recent years. He can incorporate CFD, wind analysis, shadow analysis, people movement, etc. And a lot of that can be used when you design the shape of a building itself. Now, let me introduce Aiko. She's an architect working remotely from a small village on the Shikoku Island and she can create the most beautiful shapes. In the world of architecture, we like to refer to shape as form, as in form and function. And that is why we often call this search for the right shape form finding. Now, how does Aiko find form? Well, she automates it. She, the term form finding can be easily connected to soap models, fry auto, go to force density methods, dynamic realization, and one of those paths will lead you to my uh, Voronax. But I digress. Aiko will use different optimization and automation techniques to find a form or to generate a shape in other terms. And that is a very important form of automation. With a pen and a paper, you can generate few solutions. And if you want to model them in 3D or even in analog 3D, that will eat up a lot of your time. So automating the process, generating thousands or even millions of solutions and choosing one based on a set of criteria, wind, shadow, sustainability, square footage, volume, it's not a bad example of cool and useful automation and Icon knows it and she's trying to use the same algorithms to help her friend who is a video game designer. But that's a different story that I will tell next time. Now that Rick gave you the position and basic volumes of your buildings and Ico provided you with shape, you need to zoom in a bit. You need someone to generate your structural elements, you know, your Wall slabs, ceilings, beam, columns, girders, struts, panels, doors, windows, facade elements. All of those things occupy space. And for describing space, we use geometry. For geometry generation, we can always call Silas. Now, he started studying math at the University of Nairobi, but soon switched to architecture thinking he will apply his love and knowledge of geometry there. Uh, he did not realize that most of modern development needed him to know one particular mathematically well-defined form, a box. Uh, but soon he discovered that there are architects who explore different shapes, especially inspired by nature, and they needed his help. We need his help. In my LinkedIn contact suggestions, 60 to 70% of people have a computational designer in their profile description. And yes, Silas is one of them. But what do these people do? Well, Silas generates geometry not by classical modeling, drawing points and lines and walls, but by generating them using an algorithm. Instead of drawing architecture, he is 
typing architecture. Most of the times he will actually use a tool like Grasshopper that enables him to program visually and sometimes he will use scripts to enhance their definitions. But he is proud that uh, of recently he can write his own plugins and add-ons and all of this so that we can speed up the process of modeling and therefore have time to try out many more solutions that we normally would. Now remember, finding form is one thing that can be automated, but, gener but generating elements in order to build that form is a more complicated way of automation and a completely different beast. Now, ICO and Silas often work together and they can parametrically connect their algorithms. Once ICO generates a new shape, Silas structural elements automatically regenerate. So, that's kind of neat. However, Silas, with his math background, loves to say in his world of numbers and does not find it inspiring to think much about screws and nuts and bolts and welds. That is also mechanical and boring. Not for Clara. <laughs> Now, growing up in Stockholm, she used to hang out at her father's architectural office and always marvel at those very detailed models of connections. She grew up to be an architect herself, but only after finishing her bachelor in mechanical engineering first. Now, Clara has a twin sister, she's a lawyer and has nothing to do with our story. However, the term twin is becoming one of the most used terms in construction industry. Making basic geometry is nice, right? And Clara appreciates what Rick is doing and she would never admit it publicly, but she thinks that is too simple. So she's trying to generate real-world precision geometry. That will bring us to the next level. Yes, Clara can generate complex 3D elements. She can generate shop drawings at the click of a button. But forget all those geometrically complex buildings for a moment. Clara knows that we should be generating everything, doorknobs, power sockets, floor heating pipes, automatically, at the click of a button. Is the DNA that I will talk about in just a moment. City building element detail but before we go further, let's address one small annoying thing brought to us by the space-time continuum and its ability to curve. Now, here is the main enemy engineers have been fighting with for millennia. Gravity. Now, physics helped us calculate our way through the roof and the second roof and the third roof but for a long time now we split the work of geometry and work of static analysis between architects and engineers. Well, no more. You see, geometry can have a lot of data attached to it. For example, if you take a line and tell it in an automated way, of course, what cross section it has, what material it is made from and how it is connected to the other elements, you can automate yourself a nice statical model. You can add a couple of things like load combinations and that will enable you, enable you to generate simultaneously a geometrical and a statical model. Something that was historically siloed. You create one, then another and lose so much time. Now that can be merged. Mercedes lives in Seville, Spain. Now the second largest cathedral in the world made her feel as small as an ant when she was three years old. 30 years later, it makes her feel no larger. But now she can admire those spans, those beams and those columns, especially after getting her civil engineering degree at the Seville University. Now, when she helped us automatically generate the geometrical and statical model simultaneously for the Apple glass stairs, we brought eight weeks of normal work to a second of a button click. That's eight weeks every time new stairs with slightly different measures appear. Aside from that, what she does now very often is generate thousands and thousands of statical models within a few minutes and not only generate, but analyze them, evaluate them and enhance them in a loop. So that's called statical optimization. It's all automated, brought to you by lines of code, text to building. Now, automation helps you not only when you're organized, it can correct your mistakes or help you bridge some of the problems until the world comes to senses. Now, what on earth am I talking about? Elio works for a software company, one of the famous CAD software. We cannot mention the name, of course, and he complained many times about the situation in the construction industry where we 
all work in many software solutions and it is a pain in the neck to transfer data from one software to the next, especially when we start mixing the statical analysis software, game engines, video editing and, and whatnot. Now, Elio keeps repeating something we all know. This should be solved somehow with a single exchange data format. He thinks that if his company solves this, it will help the world and show that they're ahead of everyone, morally and digitally. But his bosses do not want to listen. For them, that doesn't make sense. Having proprietary formats will lock their users into their software and not let them wander off. See you at the next meeting, Elio. Meanwhile, Elio works at nights uh, on this special group of automated solutions for translating one data format into the other, patching problems that could be eliminated. Now, what is geometry? What is architecture represented digitally? Building information modeling says it all. Information and data, it's just zeros and ones really. BIM is geometry with additional information about material, cross-section, texture, area, volume, etc. All of that can be automated. Uh, I mean automatically generated, automatically filtered, automatically changed, tracked, combined. I'm not going to dwell into detailed applications because I do that in other stories, so let's stay on this high level here. What do all these people do? They generate something at the click of a button. Think, do the rules, code, hit enter. And when they click on that proverbial button and generates the block, the building shape, the geometrical model for us, it generates a statical model, a precise digital twin. Now we can go with that digital twin to the construction site. We can track the progress, compare the real state to the one in the model, use sensor on the construction site, use robots, LiDAR scans, all this with algorithms helping us to detect misalignments and human error. That is what AI is best at at the moment image and pattern recognition. This is another long story and we will leave that also for some other time. But using robots and 3D printers to build for us is probably the first thing that comes to mind when someone says automation in the building industry because we gladly equate the word automation with robots and similar machines. And that is coming fast, but you saw that that's not the only form of automation. Clara and Aiko work a lot with modular buildings. They are very popular in Scandinavia and Japan and Clara often talks about the fun fact that the idea of a module in the past was to create something and then repeat it for many times. That is how you are cheaper and more efficient. Once uh, you agree with her, Clara will remind you that modular is on its way to mean almost the opposite of that. The modules we create today are algorithms, functions, they are there to, they are there to be repeatedly called. But every time they are invoked, they can actually generate a different shape. The one automatically generated, statically analyzed and built. So now you can have modular architecture with every element unique. Almost a paradox, but very true. Katina studied biology at the University of St. Petersburg and never dreamed of being involved in architecture. But a couple of friends invited her because they are rethinking what a design process is and she realized that Designing a building is creating a form of a DNA of a building. Her friends show her how we can parametrically interconnect every single element and generate an entire digital twin that is 100% parametric. A DNA. And after the morphogenesis and the birth of a building, automation does not stop. Digital twin does not die, it just starts its life. We continue to monitor, well, everything with the Internet of Things. We can track temperature, appliances, movement, all this is creating an enormous amount of data, the making sense of which has to be automated. But let's not get ahead of ourselves again and leave something for some other stories and participants. There are so many stories of automation to tell, to tell and new ones are written every single day. Now Clara and Katina actually met for a glass of wine last night. And Clara explained her modular paradox to her. Now, Katina was slightly amused, but not at all perplexed, because she replied saying what you're already thinking. Our DNA has the same basic structure. It is a module, an algorithm, yet it produces unique organisms and has been for millions of years. No surprise that architecture shall finally catch up with nature. It was about time.